doesn't. And now, coming to you from his Holy Spirit Revival Tent in Melville, Oregon, we have the Minister Carey Deliverance and Redemption radio broadcast. about the story of the two gentlemen named Dale? Who in the crowd has the nerve, the gall, to ask about those two gentlemen? To ask about the two Dales is to ask about the murky, filthy underside of our now fair city. To turn your eye to the sinful, unseemly, sewer of souls floating in from the Columbia River and beyond. Astoria was a festering sore once. Swine calling themselves men, glorying in lustful deeds of moral dereliction. More houses of ill repute than houses of God! Oh, more wayward souls! than stars in the sky. Everybody reaching for a handful of gold. Tales of pirates, kraken, and buried treasure. They've all been told since the first white folk arrived. It was known as the wildest town in the West. And it was a fitting name. Young men being shanghaied off to China started here. Fur trappers and human trappers alike there was. Cowboys, gamblers, opium, and loose women came and went with the boats at a frenetic pace. If you had a taste for something dark, all you had to do was wait for the tide to come in. If you were looking for a good fight... This was your town! Company of loose women? If you had the coin, you could have a new girl every night. There wasn't much you could buy here for the right price. And it was about this time that the two Dales arrived. That story was ripe for their services. And they were ripe for Astoria. They were known locally as the two gentlemen named Dale. But rest assured, dear Astoria, these two beasts were no gentlemen. Though God-fearing folk never personally had to cross these two, they were known on sight by all. When law-abiding citizens passed them on the street, they averted their eyes and hurried along. As they should! Because to say these two men exuded menace would be an understatement. Whispers of pain and murder surrounded them, like a fine March mist. These were the type of men that could make any problem disappear, exact any kind of revenge, or bring you any morally corrupt item for a price. Then they vanished in the Great Fire of 1883. Or did they? Did they? How many of you good citizens have slivers of these fiends in your soul? How many of you are harboring these monsters of days past? How many of you have seen these demonic specters wandering through the misty streets of Astoria? Look deep within, dear followers, look deep. Sometimes, 
Places are not where they appear to be. People are not always the same person you think they are. And sometimes, dreams walk amongst us. It's 1883 in Astoria, Oregon. Newt Sorensen is standing in the middle of a busy thoroughfare, having successfully passed through the portal. He knows why he's here and what he's looking for, and his purpose is unyielding and resolute. What's your poison, cowboy? Or mayhaps I should call you gunslinger. The first coin is for the shot of whiskey. The second is for information. I can help you with that first coin, but the second coin. Let's start with the whiskey then. To high winds and mermaids. To high winds and mer... Say, what did you say your name was? I didn't. You wanted some information? That I did. That I did indeed. I'm looking for a couple of gentlemen. I'm told any saloon in town could point me in their direction. That depends on these gentlemen, I suppose. I'm looking for the two gentlemen that share the same first name. I'll tell you what. I'll give you another shot of whiskey for that second coin, and you just be on your way. I run a classy establishment here, and I don't need no trouble. I don't care how many guns you got. You'll need all those guns and more to deal with those two monsters. Now drink up and move along, cowboy. I'll tell you what. This last coin is for your time and trouble. If you see those two gents, you tell them Newt was looking for them. T.A. and Anderson are sitting in T.A.'s small office at their laboratory with the door closed. It's 1 p.m. in the afternoon. They are privately discussing what they each experienced at the meadow less than 40 minutes before. I think it would be in our best interest to record our conversation for the council, as I'm sure they'd find it intriguing. That's a bad idea, Trenton. We lost a couple of men out there by mysterious means. How are we going to explain that to the council? These are not the first people to disappear by mysterious means. The Bureau lost two of their own out there in 1917. Our superiors know what we're doing out here. We lost two humans on our first assignment. I'm gonna take a guess and state that they will not be happy with us. Let's just take a step back for a moment. I'm pretty shaken up. I need a drink. You? Yes, please. I feel like once everyone was in place, it all just happened so quickly. What do you remember? Did you see anything while you were- Let's go over what you saw first, as that would be what we put in the report. If we do a report. Yes, if we decide to report this event. What did you witness during the event? The core decoder was not functional. The portal opened as a large orb of light. You were proceeding toward the orb of light like you were hypnotized, arms out. Then you connected to the light source and started floating. That's when Newt ran into the orb to the Adair girl, and then the orb blinked out. What happened to John Frederick? You saw the Adair girl? Yes, she appeared in the orb. When the orb blinked out, she disappeared, and you dropped to the ground, unconscious. Did the reporter take any pictures? Many, many photographs, but it doesn't matter. He's gone. John Frederick is gone? John is gone. What do you mean? Where did he go? When the orb blinked out and you dropped to the ground, the ground where John Frederick was standing opened up 
and swallowed him, camera and all. The earth just opened up and swallowed him. I've never witnessed anything like that. So John Frederick is gone. Definitely gone. John is gone. What happened after that? Time and space suspended momentarily. Suspended? What? Suspended? Suspended. It was at that point Sister Rachel appeared to me. Rachel? You saw Rachel? Yes, Rachel. She said that Newt was where he was supposed to be, and that John Frederick will bother us no more. You spoke to Rachel? What else did she say? She told me it's our duty to protect, and beware the two gentlemen. We have to do the report, Anderson. Despite the loss of the reporter? Despite and because of the loss of the reporter. They're not going to be happy that there's a loose end, because we have no proof as to what happened in the first place, but the fact that he's actually missing helps our case. They'll want us to, at the very least, tie up the loose end. I hadn't quite considered that. It is part of the job. The larger dilemma is Newt. He's a local. Someone will be bound to look for him sooner than later, don't you think? Newt? Newt Sorensen? Definitely not. Another drink? I have the mail in today's paper. Thank you, Joseph. If we cannot be disturbed any further this afternoon, that would be great. Oh, sweet Jesus, Trenton. Make it a double. Look at this headline. Local reporter goes on the lam after kidnapping allegations. Local reporter and photographer for the Astorian Gazette, John Frederick, has run out of town after allegations he tried to kidnap and force himself on 15-year-old Norma Belknap, the daughter of prominent residents Richard and Tanya Belknap. Last week during the annual Scandinavian festival, that son of a bitch. A bench warrant was served after he failed to show up to court on Monday to answer the allegations. The sheriff found his room at Hazel's boarding house cleared of all personal belongings. The editor of the Astoria Gazette, Paul Richardson, stated that Mr. Frederick had been absent from his post since the allegations last week. He is considered at large and dangerous. And Rachel said the report will be no further bother. Well, that takes care of that, but I'm, I'm feeling uneasy, Anderson. Now we need to figure out what happened to Newt. Well, there is still a small problem. What's that? In my haste, I forgot the decoder as we left. No, that can't be. Are are you sure you left it at the meadow? 100% sure. We need to go back to the meadow. After all we've been through today, reporters getting swallowed by the ground, people appearing and disappearing, I don't know why I'm surprised. Very well, we'll go back tonight. And goddamn that clock! Anderson, why? Why do we have that obnoxious clock? It was a gift. Now please focus, T.A. We're going back tonight? I was thinking more like in a little while here. After dark. We'll go to the meadow after dark. It's settled then. Wait. We're going to the meadow after dark tonight.